Well, after a shocking death, everyone is left reeling and reminiscing in another amazing episode. Don't change the channel. Hey guys, it's Homer for Hall and Catch Fire, Season 4, Episode 8, Goodwill, and I was obviously very much looking forward to this episode, but at the same time, I didn't really know where we were going to go now, because after such a tremendous death, you know, as we got last week with Gordon, I did not know where the show was really going to go, how it was going to move on, what was really going to happen, but I have to say that based on what this episode presented, I think they're going to end the show right. I think they're really handling it right because this was easily one of the most realistic portrayals of death I've ever seen. It definitely is one of the most somber episodes we've had of this show, but it wasn't necessarily depressing. It was more hopeful and kind of showing how something so tremendous like this, you know, really does bring everyone together, really brings up all these old feelings, and that's something I really loved about this episode, but let's just get into it, I definitely do want to talk about this one. So, we start off in 1976, which I thought made a lot of sense, you know, we just lost Gordon, so I thought it was actually very appropriate to actually show him and Donna's um, marriage, a flashback we've never seen. So they're unwinding after a visit from Donna's parents, and she asks her to promise him that they won't ever look at each other the way they do, and he says he can't make any promises, and... That line is a lot more poignant, maybe be, mainly because we know what happened to Gordon and Donna. I mean, basically, they both just got so caught up in their work. Donna especially got very caught up in her work that their, you know, relation pretty much suffered because of it. So Donna mentions that her parents offered to buy them a house in Dallas, and she points out that she won't have more time to work on projects if they had free babysitting help. And she says that she's also concerned about everything that Joni eats and sees, eats and touches, including the exploding fireworks next to her her head, getting the sense that these, you know, rockets that uh, Gordon's done, he's done them for like a very long time now, and Joni never showed much interest, but Haley clearly did. So Gordon refused to leave San Francisco, and he accuses Donna of flip-flopping on where to live, and she says that he's being so mean right now, and he says that they should just think about one thing they want to do before they do it, since as we know, they got pregnant and then married, and he feels like he hasn't made any decisions to really get them here, and... She reminds him that he's actually the one who proposed, and their argument actually ends up waking up baby Joni. It gets so bad where Joni actually wakes up here, and it, I thought it was a really well done scene, because we're seeing here already that these two have had a lot of arguments, you know, that a lot of their marriage has been built up of arguments, and... It's been a lot of them reflecting on some of the choices they've made, and I don't think they ever necessarily resented each other, but I do think they wish they really did do things differently. Maybe they handled things, you know, a little bit differently, because they were kind of forced to get married after we know Donna got pregnant and after high school and things like that, and... Meanwhile, Gordon, we see he grabs, uh, Donna is soothing Joni in the middle of the night, and we get this really great scene where Donna, where Gordon's grabbing a snack at a gas station. He contemplates whether or not to actually go to this, um, this toll booth where this phone is, and he actually decides that he's just gonna throw the snack away, and he clearly does need time to himself, and it's just perfectly examining their relationship. Their relationship was very complicated. These two really, Yes, they had a good marriage, but for each other, they were very different, and uh, they both had very conflicting sort of differences, and we definitely do see how big of, you know, an impact on their marriage right in this scene. So we then come back to the present day, where we see Donna, Haley, and Joni, they arrive at Gordon's house, and this is where most of the episode really takes place, because mainly what we're dealing with here is a bottle episode, which I thought was really smart. It made sense to really get everyone in this one place after such a tremendous loss, and Donna instructs them to put red stickers on items they want to donate, and green stickers on items they want to keep. So you can tell immediately she knows what they have to do, she can't really stop it from happening, and she's very adamant about getting this done. She tells them to start in their rooms, and don't forget all their schoolwork and textbooks, and assures her daughters that she loves them. So... She opens up a drawer, which is chock full of nostalgia. It's got all these pictures of Joni and Haley as kids. And you can just see her hearkening back to really, I think, when things were simpler for her, when things weren't as uh, complicated. But 
Basically, Joe and Cameron then arrive, and they bring packing supplies to Goran's house, and Joe asks how they're doing, and says it's a stupid question since they're all doing terrible, and uh, she thanks them for helping out. He tells her that the service was beautiful, which I thought it made sense to actually start this after the funeral service, because we know there's going to be one. We don't need to see a funeral and all that stuff, and... You know, the show has always kind of been about moving on, and I think that's a big part of what this um, episode really is. It's about how can they really go from here? How can they really begin again? Is it possible for them to really move on without Gordon? And basically, Donna prays him on his speech and asks for a copy of it. Cameron agrees, and Joe asks where she'd like them to start, and Donna says it's kind of hard to figure out. She says to start bag we'll start with bagging up Gordon's clothes for Goodwill, and Donna then asks Cameron to pack up the living room and keep all the pictures for the girls that they'll eventually want, and asks her to put some music on, and Cameron looks through Gordon's records. She becomes uh, paralyzed kind of by the choice, uh, by what it is, so she picks out a Dire Straits record, and we then get this really well-done montage where... Everyone is basically forced to do something. They're instructed for a certain task, and Joe, he's folding out Gordon's clothes. Donna's emptying out kitchen cupboards, the same kitchen where her and Gordon had a lot of um, love, but also fights in there. Cameron's packing up electronics, which I thought it made sense for Cameron, because, you know, she's always been into that kind of stuff, and Haley then removes a poster from her in her bedroom. Cameron pockets some photos of the group back from the giant days, and, uh... I thought that was a really well done scene, just kind of bring the show full circle, showing where, the, how far they've really come, you know, they, in the beginning of the show, they were all just kind of their own young sort of, um, you know, uh, they, they were all just sort of their young extraordinaires, and they all had these different ideas, and, uh, Donna finds a photo of Gordon and Katie on the fridge. Joe sits down with a book that he actually found in Gordon's coat pocket. And I just thought this was such a well-done montage, just really showing how everyone's trying to move on here. So Donna then checks on Haley in her room. They both mourn Gordon together. And there are certain scenes this episode doesn't show you. Why? Because we know what they're going to say. We know what they're going to say. We, you know, we know how they're going to help each other. We know how they're going to... Um, you know, move on from that. I thought that was definitely well done. But Donna the visits Joni to help her pack up her room, and this is really one of the biggest parts of the episode. Joni's been a character that I really like. I think Catherine Newton has done really great work as his character, but here, I think this was probably her strongest episode, because they reminisce about certain pictures, and Donna says she doesn't have to get rid of everything. She could just pack up her whole room, and Joni says she doesn't know where to start, and Donna then helps her out. She discovers uh, a stash of unsent college applications, and demands an explanation, and Joni then storms out. So we realize, holy shit, Joni doesn't want to go to college, and Donna then follows her out, says she told them that she sent there, and says that they should talk with this privately, but Joni asks why not there, and asks if she's afraid of what they might think, and says that she should let them see what a mess they've been, and... Donna says she doesn't know why she's doing this, and she tells Joni that Gordon would be devastated if he knew she didn't apply to college, and Joni responds with probably one of the most insensitive things she could say, but really something that um, I think, you know, Donna in general uh, really does uh, take note of, where she says it's a good thing that he's not there to see it, and Donna says it's a horrible thing to say. Joni asks how long it took her to use Gordon against her, like 10 days, and says she's surprised she could hold it out for that long, and Donna says that sometimes she doesn't even know who she is anymore. They're all hurting and upset, and Joni asks what she knows since she couldn't even stand him. And again, what Joni's saying, this is all relevant. This is all true. What Joni's saying, I didn't think Joni was necessarily just being an annoying brat, mainly because the fact that I think she really, what she's saying here, yeah, it does really speak a lot of volumes about her and Gordon's relationship. A lot of the relationship was Donna um, using Gordon um, against her and finding ways to um, kind of use Gordon and all this stuff like that. And Joni never really felt like her and Gordon had the great of a relationship because Donna always tried to turn Gordon against her and all that various stuff. And I thought that was definitely a very strong scene. It really, again, just says a lot about Donna's parenting, and we really do get more into that in this episode. So Donna then smells cigarette smoke wafting from Joni's room. Cameron says that she wants to piss her off, and it's the exact same thing that she would have done when she was 17. And throughout this, you know, the show, especially this season, we've drawn a lot of parallels to Joni and Haley to Cameron, and how similar they really are, and I think this episode really to show that, you know, I've always tried to figure out, is Joni or Haley, which one's more like Cameron? I think this episode kind of shows us that there are similar traits in both of them. They both are very much like Cameron, and we do see that here. 
because Cameron says she wants to be a jerk and she should just let her be. Donna says she lost it at her, but she's the but she's the one who didn't send them in. And Cameron says she doesn't know if reasoning with her is really going to be that helpful to her in this situation. And Donna says she probably shouldn't have brought up Gordon. And Cameron actually offers to talk to Joni. And we get this great scene where she checks in with Joni in her room, and Cameron tells her that Donna is totally freaking out right now, and what she's doing is very effective, and Joni says she wasn't trying to do anything, she just needed a smoke, and Cameron takes it, puts it out, and asks her what's going on, because she knows very well that there's definitely something more to this, it's not just Joni trying to, um, you know, disobey her and rebel against her mother, it's definitely not that, so... Joe then sees a very stressed Donna. They converse about Joni and Haley, and uh, Haley asks Donna where Gordon's clothes are, and Joe says, tells her that he just dropped them off at Goodwill, and Haley admits that she wanted Gordon's green sweater, and again, this is just a scene that really shows how far Joe's come, because the old Joe would have just, you know, focused on his work, but... You see, he's really taking the time to develop a relationship with Haley, so much so to the point where he drops everything he's doing to leave with Haley to retrieve the sweater. He doesn't care. You know, she wants this sweater. He's going to get it for her because that's how much he really cares about this relationship. That's how much he wants it to, um, you know, he wants to be able to uh, continue their relationship. He doesn't want Gordon's um, death to really compromise it. He wants to keep it and... Uh, you definitely do see that here. He wants to keep the relationship in play, and I definitely did like seeing that. Again, it's not just him doing this for Gordon. He's doing it because he genuinely wants a, you know, bond with Haley, and we really do see that. So I definitely really enjoyed that. But Joni then vents to Cameron a lot of stuff about Donna that, again, I do think is relevant, about how Donna has this need for perfection and how Donna's just upset because she can't brag about Joni going to college. And I would agree with that. I mean, we've seen throughout this entire show that Donna's always been about being the best and doing the best she can do and, you know, making sure that she's better than everyone else. And that's something I think that has definitely, um, you know, crushed a lot of her relationships again. And Joni has definitely taken note of that, we've seen. And Cameron then urges Joni to give Donna a break. And Joni offers to stay with her, says she doesn't need to be taken care of. And everyone looks at her like she can't do anything for herself. And she very much can. And Cameron then lists off the benefits of going to college. And Joni interrupts and says she already knows. And she doesn't really need to hear from her. But again, I think just showing Cameron and Joni bonding, it's really just, um, again, showing Joni, um, how important of a relationship this is, how important her relationship is with Donna, and I really just love seeing these two bond together. They didn't have a ton of scenes in the show, you know, we've seen Cameron bond with Joni and Haley, but this just really showed how similar the two are, and how much Cameron has really learned in the past few years from Donna, and I definitely really like seeing that. So we then get a similar scene between Haley and Joe, where she's listening to headphones in the car with Joe, and Joe actually invites her to play her music on the speaker, and she puts on the song Fish Heads, and again, this just shows how far Joe has come. You know, years ago, Joe would have just been like, oh no, this is my music, you know, we do what I want to do, and I don't take any other suggestions, but... Over the years, Joe's grown a lot more, um, you know, he, he's just gotten a lot more reserved, and he's been, he hasn't been as in charge, and through his success, he really has grown a lot more humbled, and it shows that he is willing to take notes from other people, and he is willing to take suggestions, and I definitely like seeing that, so... Donna asks Cameron how it went with Joni. Cameron assures her that she's just cooling off and tells Cameron that she finished Pil- And we get this great scene where she tells Cameron that she finished Pilgrim. And Cameron says she made the game for people like her, but unfortunately there just aren't enough like her. And Donna says she loved the ending, which reveals that the Pilgrim is actually a kid. And Cameron smiles and thanks Donna for playing the game. And Donna tries to apologize to Cameron for lashing out over the rover algorithm. But Cameron, you can tell, is already past it. In fact, she doesn't even remember what Donna really said to her. So throughout this episode, Donna makes several attempts to try to repair her relation with Cameron. And while I think Cameron does eventually want to do that... She's not just going to negate everything that Donna ever did, because there is a lot of history between these two, there's a lot of bad blood there, and Cameron's just not going to forget about it, that's just, that's not how it's going to work. Donna wishes it would work that way, but it's just, that's not how this is going to work, unfortunately, so you can tell that while Donna's making attempts, Cameron is just not there yet, you can tell, so... 
Joe then tears through bags of donated clothes at Goodwill in search of Gordon's green sweater, and an employee berates him and says, oh, you can't do that, you know, once it's here, it's ours now, and Joe asks the employee to him an unopened bag, he explains him the situation, but the employee still refuses, and he gives his car keys to Haley and instructs her to pull the truck up to the drop-off dock, so I really love this scene, because Joe's using very similar tactics that he used uh, in Season 1, you know, his manipulative sort of can-do attitude, how he took over everything, and, you know, he uh, very much went above the rules and things like that, but at the same time, he's doing it for someone else rather than himself, and I really like seeing that, so Katie then stops by Gordon's house, and Katie's been a character that I really haven't thought was much of one, as I've said, she's really been my major issue with this season, so I didn't really feel like Katie was much of a character, but this episode honestly kind of fixed that because when Anna Klumski in this episode really got me to understand Katie a lot more than I have in these past few episodes. So she stops by Gordon's house and tells Cameron that she's actually moving to Seattle and she shares her hope that Joe will actually continue to lead Comet, that she just can't do it anymore and uh, she's going to move on to other projects. So... Haley then pulls up to the loading dock at Goodwill, and Joe then runs out with the unopened trash bag, and he casually jokes that, um, you know, he jumps into the truck to drive us the employee, yells after them, and he casually jokes that, oh, this might not be Gordon's clothing, and they laugh about it, but he realizes it's actually not the case. He actually has failed Haley, and you can see the disappointment on Joe's face. He was really hoping that... This could actually, you know, get the two on even better terms that he could really do something for Haley, but unfortunately he failed her, and I did feel bad for Gordon here, you know, again, you could really just tell he wanted to do this for her, and uh, you definitely do see that here, but... Donna then greets Katie and assures her that Gordon was crazy about her, and she offers up any items that Katie might want to keep. And Katie then reveals something that I thought was really interesting. She reveals her love for a photo of Donna and Gordon when they were young and fierce looking and just had this attitude where, you know, every other couple could be jealous of them and showing all this envy that everyone else, and she admits that she was jealous of the parts that Go of Gordon that Donna got to experience during her marriage. She didn't get to see Cyburn's Gordon. She didn't get to see Gordon when he wasn't successful. You know, that's stuff that Donna has seen. She's gotten to see Gordon you know, build this sort of life for himself and make, you know, the creation of all the go all, going all the way back to the giant, creating the giant, working at Mutiny, uh, you know, working at Kalnuck, all this stuff that Donna's gotten to see. But at the same time, Katie hasn't been through all of the damage that it did to both Gordon and Donna, and Donna lets her know that Joni's up in her room, and if she wants to see her, but to proceed with caution, and Katie says that she'll be careful, and it's it's just a very well done scene. I really love seeing that, and I like seeing the juxtaposition between these two. You know, Gordon and Do Donna and Katie, they might not seem that similar, but we see in the scene they absolutely are. They actually are very similar. They definitely do have very similar viewpoints, and really to get me to understand Katie a lot more here. She loved Gordon, but she really wished she got to experience a lot more of the stuff that Gordon got to with Donna than those two ever will, because Gordon was successful, and she never really got to see that, and it really to show how even though these two have only been dating for, I think, about a couple months now, Gordon has made a real impact in Katie's life, and we definitely do see that, and I thought Anna Klumski really did a lot of great work here, for sure. So Donna tells Cameron that Joe has a great report with Haley and Joni and really loves the bond that the two of them have. And Cameron says because they're a team. And uh, she then finds Katie crying in the living room. And it turns out this is actually the spot where she found Gordon's body. And she just, she can't do it. She can't be in that house anymore because there are just too many bad memories of things that she, I don't think, is ever going to get over. I mean, when you see something like that, that's not something that someone gets over. You don't just see someone die and then, oh, you just get over it. That's not how it works, you know? That's something that really does resonate with you, and that's something that's happened with Katie. So Joe and Haley pull up to the curb as Katie gets ready to leave in her car. They wave goodbye, and this very well could be the final time we see Katie, but I was satisfied. I liked the way this played out. We saw Katie, you know, we really did see what she wanted. We saw the impact that Gordon really did have on her life, and I really love that. Again, Anna Klumski... Great work this season, and I was very impressed with what we got with her here. So, Haley then asks Joni why she didn't apply to college, and Joni then reasons that she wouldn't have gone into any colleges, and we haven't gotten a lot of scenes between these two. We really haven't, but I like seeing this. You know, we've seen Joni kind of um, playfully make fun of Haley a lot, but this was really a good time for these two to bond, and 
Joni talks about she doesn't feel she would have gotten in any college, and she figures that Haley at least turned out perfect in every way. And Haley makes this very subtle nod and basically confirms that, yeah, she's a lesbian, and she's very aware of that. And uh, I think we kind of get the idea that Joni now knows about it, and Haley asks if she go Joni's going away too. And Joni doesn't answer. She doesn't tell her if she actually is planning on going away or not. So it seems like Joni doesn't really know what she wants to do in her life. She's kind of undecided. She really is just kind of, um, you know, coming as she goes. And I think we're going to find out in the finale. But I really love the scene. It's just bringing these two sisters closer together. We have not had a lot of scenes of them, just the two of them. And I really love seeing that. So... Bosworth and cooks chili in Gordon's kitchen. He urges Joe to try some, and he tries to joke about Gordon, but Joe, unfortunately, he's just not ready yet. He can reminisce about Gordon, he can think about the fun times they had together, but he can't joke about him yet. He's just not there, and Donovan finds Bosworth cooking chili in the kitchen, and this is something that, you know, they always love. They always love Bosworth's chili, they always loved, um, getting to eat it, and, uh, we definitely do see how that's hard for her as well. So Donna then joins Cameron in the backyard, and we get this scene that really, again, does show um, where these two are and how similar they are. And, Ken, you know, Mackenzie Davis and Carrie Bish just acted the shit out of this scene because Cameron admits it's too much and says she didn't know it would be this hard to be here, says she didn't mean to make this about her, and Donna says to please do so and says she really feels like everyone's been handling her, and Cameron's the first person who hasn't really asked her how she's holding up, and Donna's happy about that, and Cameron admits that no one knows how to act. Donna says she loves her when people say, how are you doing? And Cameron says she'd always respond with hanging in there, mainly because it was just too complicated to actually admit how they were, because in reality, they weren't really um, doing that great. So Cameron shares she's having trouble talking to Joe because he wants children while she does not, and she never has, and she doesn't see that changing anytime soon. And Donna tells her to tell him that it's really hard. She's got to really want to do even a halfway decent job. And Cameron tells her she always wanted it. And Donna says she didn't plan on getting pregnant right after school, but she always wanted it. And there's nothing wrong with feeling that way. And they cry for Gordon and admit to missing each other. And Cameron says she's there for her. And Donna says she spent so much time telling him everything he did wrong. And Cameron agrees that it was quite a lot. And like I said in my review, I think... Again, a, a significant tragedy like this really does bring people together, and while there's been a lot of, you know, history between Donna and Cameron, and they definitely have gone through a lot of emotional trauma, be well, not necessarily trauma, but they've gone through a lot of emotion because of it, Cameron, you know, really had her dream crushed with, you know, Donna, um getting rid of her immunity and then uh, doing the IPO without her, and I think that's something that Cameron's not ever going to forget. It does show that it is bringing these two close together, and I do think over the course of these next few episodes, they are going to reconcile. They are going to come together, and I'm definitely looking forward to seeing how that really does end up going in the finale here. So we then see Joe, Donna, Cameron, and Bosworth. They all gather in the dining room for chili. Joni and Haley join them laughing, saying that there's an inside joke, which I got the sense that Haley basically came out to Joni and admitted that, yes, she is a lesbian, and Joni's well aware of that. But Joe apologized to Haley for not getting Goran's sweater back, and Haley doesn't really seem that upset. She's actually very understanding, realizing that, you know, they have to move past it, and they reminisce about Gordon together, and uh, it's a really nice scene. I love the way it was done, but then we flash back again to 1976, and this just really brought the episode home for me, because Donna is confronting baby Joni while talking to her mother on the phone, and she insists that Gordon will come back home, and... We realized Gordon, we didn't know where he was going to go, but he actually is driven to a quarry. And he, and this is, of course, the quarry that back in episode six, Donna talked to Joni about. Remember, she talked to her about how, um, she was fearless and how, uh, Gordon was kind of skittish to go into the quarry, but she wasn't. Uh, well, he actually decides to jump off a cliff into the lake and, he yells with jubilation as he breaks through the surface, and he, you can just see, he feels so accomplished. He's finally been able to do something without Donna urging him to. He did it on his own, and it was just a really well-done scene. We really do see how Gordon had this great triumph in his life, and he returns home. He finds Donna singing to Joni, the same flashback from the final moments of his life, and we realize why this was such a significant moment for him. This was a moment where he felt the closest to Donna. This is the moment where he felt the happiest in his life is when he was able to accomplish this and 
Donna hugs him, tells him never to abandon her like that again, and he assures her that he won't, and that is the way this episode ends. So, overall, guys, what an incredible episode this really was. I really just love pretty much everything about this episode. Uh, but like I said, really the biggest question moving forward is where is everyone going from here? Uh, Cameron and Donna, for example. I do think there is a way for these two to repair the damage. I really do. I think we saw in this episode that, yes, there absolutely is a way for those two to actually fix the what seemed irreparable damage that they both have gone through. They both just gotta want to do it, and I think Donna is very ready. She's demonstrated many times that, yes, she's very interested in repairing things with Cameron. Cameron, I'm not sure. I'm really not sure if she wants to, because like I said, I think these two can be friends. I don't think they can ever work together again. I just don't really see that happening. It was not a good experience, so I think these two can be friends again, but I don't know if they can actually go back to the way things were, where they're working together. I just don't really see that happening, but I could be wrong. We'll have to see the way things do turn out there. As far as Cameron and Joe, I'm really hoping this is not the end for them. I want these two to last. I really do, but again, they both just gotta work at it. They gotta realize that they are actually very similar to Donna and Gordon, where they both want very different things, and they both have have very conflicting um, opinions, but they can't let those conflicting uh, ideas sort of complicate their, you know, compromise their uh, their relationship. So I don't know where this is really going to go. I'm interested in seeing how that's going to play out. I'm just really hoping it doesn't destroy their relation because I really have loved the fact that these two have been on relatively good terms all season. We have not really seen that up to this point. It's always been like, oh, Joe is a parasite to Cameron and that Cameron needs to get away from him and that all that Joe complicates Cameron's life. But we've seen this season, they both have been in places where they've made this relationship work. But can they actually fix it? Well, we'll have to see. I'm interested in seeing how that's going to turn out. I also really love what we got with Joni and Haley in this episode because we did see that these two as well, they have a lot of different ideas. Um, you know, uh, Joni clearly doesn't know really what she wants to do. She knows she's not interested in college, so what does she really wants to do? We don't know. And then as far as uh, Haley, Haley seems like, you know, she knows very well she wants to. She wants to work with Joe. She wants to work at Comet. This is her future. This is something that she wants to do, and uh, I think she's going to continue working there. So I'm looking forward to seeing how that's going to go. We saw a, a trailer for next, you know, for the finale next week where where, um, she's telling Gore, you know, Joe about like her different ideas, and I thought that was honestly really. Uh, it's gonna be interesting to see how that all plays out. Uh, Bosworth doesn't seem like he has much more of a story to tell. It seems like Bosworth and Diane are happy together. Um, you know, we don't really need to see much. I'm sure we're gonna see more of Diane because Diane did have a very significant impact on Donna's life, but it doesn't really seem like there's much more of a story to tell here. Uh, overall, guys, you can just really tell that the story is very quickly wrapping up. You can very well tell that we are approaching the end of this narrative, and I'm definitely very impressed with the way things are wrapping up here. It seems the show is focusing more on the successes and not focusing on the failures. Yes, the failures have happened, but I do think that they definitely are going to focus on the success. I think there's going to be a time jump because there's been so many time jumps that I think they're going to do that. But at the same time, this is a show that has been so unpredictable, especially this season, um, that I don't know if they're uh, actually going to do that. Maybe they will just keep things in the present, but we'll have to see. Either way, guys, I'm very excited for the finale next week. I really loved everything about this episode. This is one of the most realistic portrayals of grief I think I've ever seen on TV. Some people compared this to... Um, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, the body episode, which I very much agree with. I have loved that episode. It's a very hard episode to get through, but it is a phenomenal episode about grief and how we move past it and really the impact that someone has on someone's life. And just that scene with Katie, I think, really does bring that home very well. Katie wasn't a huge character this season, but it does show how Gordon did have some sort of an impact on her life. He made her think about a lot of things, and I definitely really did love seeing that. Overall, guys, I absolutely love this episode. I'm absolutely going to give Hall and Catch Fire Season 4, Episode 8, Goodwill, in A. So, over, guys, doing this episode of Hall and Catch Fire. Let me know what you guys thought of this episode overall. Love your thoughts. And I cannot believe the series finale next week. It is insane, but 
I'm really hoping it's satisfying. This has been a really great final season, especially these last few episodes have really been amazing, and I really hope this series finale is as good as these last few have been. But that's my review. Hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you guys in my next video, and I will see you guys for that. Okay, bye.